Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. I saw this thread, I didn't have time to do a proper screen capture on a tablet. I've seen a few people jump down this guy's throat for, uh, he's basically doing this thing, I think it's called like Comics Dad Talks About Comics. And he's, you know, middle-aged, probably around 50. And supposedly, the bit about the channel is that he's been in a while and he's going to talk about the industry, teach you about the industry. But what it really is, is a middle-aged guy trying to fumble his way through a rapidly, absolutely rapidly changing um, marketplace, industry, all of that. So you might know his name, you might not. It's really not on you if you don't. He's done some stuff. I think the most recent thing he did was uh, the latest Jupiter's uh, Legacy miniseries with Mark Millar. He starts off and uh, he says, Shop Talk. Between HBO Max pulling shows targeting smaller audiences and Barnes & Noble not ordering any hardcovers that aren't already a proven seller thing, it's feeling a little bleak to be a creator that doesn't play in the mainstream safe lane right now. So um, I'm not going to bury the lead here. Uh, he seems like a okay guy, but you really see the whole, like, I formed the plan for my life when I was 15 and I just can't change it type of thing. It's like, well, you know, I'm going to make a comic, you know, I'm probably, you know, probably going to do pretty good. I'm going to draw X-Men and Spider-Man, but then I'm going to create like the next spawn. You know, that's going to be a movie. It's going to be an HBO series. It's going to be, you know, toys. It's going to be the whole thing and then probably reboot it every 10 years or so. Um, so I'm not going to bury the lead here. Stop trying to get legitimacy in comic book publishing from anything except for publishing a comic and selling it to a reader. That's it. It's a very, very incredibly simple industry. You get an idea for a comic, then you finish it, and then you sell it to people, then they buy it, they receive it, however they receive it. That's the end. That is not only the finish line, but that is the victory line. Um, back in the day, uh, comics was never that cool. So it was just like, get me on a good book. Let me have a good run. And then it became, you know, uh, millions of sales, early 90s. And then it became everything gets optioned for everything. And it just feels like everyone is trying to have something that their mom can use to impress her friends. If you say, oh, he's doing a comic for Dark Horse, nobody knows what a Dark Horse in your mom's friend circle. It, it's a meaningless phrase. But if you say, oh, my son's comic is a TV show, that's something. Stop trying to get validation from corporations. Get validation from readers. This isn't even an A to B to C to D industry. This is like an A to B to C industry. Form up a team, make the comic, sell the comic to a reader. That is it. It's really simple. I just also love the idea that the mainstream is the safe lane. Are you fucking kidding me? What is this, Hoop Dreams? The one in freaking 5,000 comic book pros that are going to get an HBO Max deal? Barnes & Noble will give you literally pennies on the dollar of the cover price. Having said that, between digital publishing and crowdfunding, we have more options as creators than ever before. I have to believe as a creator who kind of just does his own thing and isn't very good at doing it any other way, that good material will always find its audience. But yeah, now is the time to be doing your own thing and to get it out there any way you can. Take the risk. Trust your instincts. Get the word out about what you're creating in any way you can think of. The thing with playing it safe in entertainment is that everything becomes kind of the same. Doing something different, doing something good, and it's a lot easier to stand out and get noticed. And then he says, P.S. By the way, we all need publicists. We're going to need a lot of publicists for smaller indie comic book creators. Just, you know, putting it out there. More of those, please. So, um... Just like my video from yesterday, you know, basically every day we're getting some mainstream comic book pro saying, hey, those YouTubers were right back in 2017. 
Um, the thing that bothers me is he's, you know, kind of feeling his way around in the dark. But this has been well illuminated for half a decade. Pick a social media platform. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, what have you. Build up an audience there. It's going to take you minimum a year, sometimes two or three. And then you've got your audience. 1,000 repeat customers is enough to live off of, to have a viable salary, viable benefits that you pay for. Brian Polito and Jimmy Palmiotti were doing this before five years ago, consistently successfully. Do you know how much a publicist costs? We're talking freaking thousands of dollars. That thing, again, is just old school thinking. It's like, well, I'll get an agent and I'll get a manager and I'll get an entertainment lawyer. You're just whittling down all of your money, just whittling it down to freaking nothing. If you do crowdfunding or if you do what I call crowdfunding plus, something like what Eric July is doing, you keep the lion's share. I kind of haven't really been in the mix for the last few weeks, so I just kind of peeked my head around. I'm like, holy shit. Eric July has actual stalkers. I mean, these people are, are watching every video he does. Showing He shows his warehouse. They, like, zoom in in the background and they count the boxes. It's kind of the same crew you've seen causing trouble for the last few years. And I was, you know, talking to a friend about it. And uh, I basically said, if you find any mainstream institution and you circumvent it, people who are on the edge of homelessness will obsess and attack you to stand for the corporations because it's just been pounded. I love capitalism, but in capitalistic societies, it's absolutely been pounded that validation from corporations is the highest goal. You know, getting a promotion, getting a sci-fi original TV show, that that's what matters. You need something that mom can explain to her sewing circle and everyone goes, oh, Get mom out, like, just, just get her out of your head. She's never going to understand comics. She thinks comics are weird. Just, just stop it. You could be the lowest paid healthcare professional and it would impress her 10 times more. Oh, speaking of numbers, I'm just going to throw some fucking numbers out there. Why not? If you want to talk numbers, find your nearest Marine. Anyway, if you're a single guy, you know, usually guy, if you can make $40,000 a year, you should be good. That should be enough. If you're in a couple, you probably want to make 80000 I'm talking about from comics. And if you got a family, if you've got offspring, probably 120000 And you might say, geez, that's kind of like more. Well, you got to pay your own health care. You know, not everyone gets essentially free health care like I do from the VA since I went and fought in a bunch of wars. <laughs> um, but you're going to have to pay your own benefits, your own healthcare, your own insurance. So yeah, you are going to need to make that extra uh, bit of money. I can think of, especially when, when you put in YouTube and all the other revenues, uh, I don't know, two dozen people have doing this. While this path has been known for a few years, it's still fairly new. Again, the mainstream industry has been around for almost a hundred years. Crowdfunding slash crowdfunding plus about 10 years and five years is like a real viable thing. People used to do one crowdfunding campaign, have huge success and then not do another one. I mean, Gail Simone had more than a hundred thousand dollars, you know, 10 years ago when that was, you know, almost unheard of. And then she never did another one again because she's like, Oh, this is a lot of work. But yeah, the path's been set out there. You've got to get out of the mindset of having corporations validate. And it's especially weird when it's like Antifa types, like people who hate capitalism. People are talking about anarchy. And then they're like, you know, the basic cable package. Um, uh, I have a show on that. Yeah, it debuts at midnight <laughs> and it got canceled at the third episode. But I've been validated by a corporation. Also, I hate capitalism. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.